uh, Alex Kincaid and Peter Lamage uh, again talking about uh, something that really cuts to our security issues. At least that's how the president has framed this. And Peter, it comes back to keeping us safe. He, he keeps saying that that uh, despite the fact that this has been looked at as a Muslim ban, he says it's not the case. It's not very different from what President Obama was doing. Any clear-thinking judge, paraphrasing here, uh, he has said, would, would agree with that, not this particular judge. But what do you think of that? And then in the end, he has the legal upper, upper hand here. I, I think he does, because what happens with immigration, which is generally considered to be a foreign national policy issue, and that is always handled by the President of the United States, the courts have always uh, supported the President having that kind of power. And this is not the first time that these, I mean, it's uncharted waters, uh, but there is presidency or president in the United States where uh, the Supreme Court sometimes did get things wrong, and the President may disagree with the outcome of those, uh, uh, the outcome. And if you can go back to, all the way back to in uh, 1800s when Lincoln actually disagreed with the outcome in the Dred Scott case. So the president still has the power to uh, exercise, uh, um, you know, uh, these kinds of matters. You know, Alex, there is the possibility here that the court doesn't rule his way and it calls into question then anything a president can do. So now it goes all the way to your point and, and to Peter's point to the Supreme Court. But if you still don't have, let's say, Gorsuch approved, um, you would have an eight court member dealing with this, uh, eight, eight justices. Right. Uh, how does that go down? Well, it's uh, possible at that point that we have a split decision and nothing happens. And then we have the standing order from the lower court, which right. of course may not be a good situation exactly. uh, yeah. for, the, for people who are supporting President Trump and this ban. So, so you know. in that event, I mean, the, the lower court ruling rules, and if it sticks at this level and, and against him, uh, what are his options, Peter, at this point, then? What would he be his options ahead of getting to the Supreme Court? Well, uh, I think that he's going to have to go back to Congress and uh, let the Congress uh, of the United States handle the issue of, uh, you know, um, this kind of suspension that he's imposing right now. But I still believe that the 1952 Act, if it winds up in the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court is either going to uh, uh, find that the president has that power, or if they uh, litigate the case and hear the case, I think they're going to rule in his, uh, in his favor because the 1952 Act, it's still the, 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 the law that was passed by Congress enacted by Congress, specifically authorizing the president to do exactly what he's doing. And uh, twice before this was exercised, as we said, in 1979 and uh, 2011. And, uh, you know, I think that they're going to, you know, the, the Supreme Court will uh, rule in, uh, in the favor of the president. And, Peter, I think it's important to point out, too, that they have in the past some very similar yes. issues. The Supreme yes. Court has yes. supported the president in issuing these kinds of orders. Going back to oh. what I said originally, this isn't that new. It's oh. not Ab that outrageous. Absolutely, absolutely. What the mm -hmm. liberals or the Democrats are arguing is that the 1965 Act made it unconstitutional for the president to, to, to base such bans on religion or any other, you know, uh, well, characteristics. Well, he'd have to prove that it's not based on religion. Yeah. But this is, right. not, this is not based on yeah. religion, and Understood. this is very clear. Here that is based on national security right, guys, issues. I have to break you off here, but I want to thank you both very, very much.